Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 20th, 2016. I'd like to thank everybody that expressed the fact that you missed the TDD Report, and I'm very glad to be starting up the 11th season. So let's get started with more sciency goodness, gadgets, and technology. This first one is from Business Insider. This startup wants to make sure you never wait in line at the movies again. I don't know if your movie theater experience has changed, but when I went in the movie theater, it seems to me that it's, uh, at my local movie theater, it's getting more automated. They still do uh, give you the bucket of popcorn, but then you put the butter on yourself and a little uh, machine off to the side, and they hand you an empty cup like at the Burger King, and you get your own drink and stuff, or McDonald's too, for that matter. And I'm thinking more and more we're getting to uh, less and less actual human beings that you interface with. Well, this application is called uh, Adam Tickets. Lionsgate executive and veteran Amazon engineer built Adam Tickets, a Santa Monica startup that wants to simplify every part of the movie theater experience down to the line for popcorn. I guess they're going to have an express line for popcorn if you have this app. A lot of people are going out to the movies. Adam co-founder Matthew Bacall told Business Insider, but between getting your friends together and picking a movie and a time and a place, all that stuff is hard work. Eh, I don't know. I mean, it's relative, but I guess. After quietly testing its platform a few dozen theaters in a few dozen theaters over the past year, Adam announced on Monday that it's expanding it's expanding to hundreds of theaters in more than seventy cities with plans to work nationwide by the end of summer. Its launch partners include Regal Cinemas, AMC Theaters, and Studio Movie Grill. Uh, that means probably most likely in the Chicagoland area I will be seeing this. Uh, the Adam app is free to download in the App Store and the Google Play Store. It lets you order movie tickets like Fandango. You can also invite friends to go with you, pull them on which movie to see, plan around the night with an in-shop interface and order concessions in advance. So if you've uh, ordered your concessions in advance, I guess you go in and just basically your ticket's already there. You just, uh, uh, when you show up at the theater, you scan your ticket's barcode in an Adam branded iPad kiosk and pick up your popcorn and candy from an express line. Besides a small convenience fee at certain theaters, the app is free for moviegoers. Yeah, I wonder what a small convenience fee is. I hate those things, too. They give this automation to where it's actually less costly for them, but then charge you a convenience fee. You know, I don't know. It's kind of like you're you're paying extra for their saving money. A Netflix-like recommendation system in the Atom app suggests movies for you based on the genres you like and what you've watched in the past. It learns the theaters you frequent with certain friends and can send suggestions. So, uh, yeah, basically it's a social type of app, and... Uh, things like that so far it's been getting a 4.5 stars out of 5 in the app store so I guess it is catching on maybe I'll see a little bit more uh, automation I guess regardless of this app or not automation is just coming and we're just gonna have to accept it that maybe we'll go into movie theaters even during uh, the evening when it's very crowded and you'll see no more than two people working at the concession stand because the rest of it will just be automated I mean I don't think it would probably take that much for a robot uh, thing to fill the popcorn buckets and then uh, if people pre buy their tickets anyway um, the person's probably, they'd have one or two people there just to kind of watch and make sure nobody does anything or, or steal anything or stuff like that. So, Next up, this is from Chris P. And he will actually be with us after this article. He's doing part of He's co-hosting the TDD report with me this week. But this is from dailymail.co.uk. Temporary tattoos can let you control gadgets. Gold leaf transfers could be used as trackpads to transmit data or even sense changes in the mood. Uh, researchers have created temporary tattoos that are sensitive to touch and can be used to control electronic devices like smartphones. And there's a, a picture, I'll put it up here, of somebody using a, some type of a tracking device. It's a temp tattoo of gold and maybe silver leaf also on their arm. And they're using it as kind of like, like a tracking device. Uh, the other thing I think is it's going to be more, if you look at the middle here where it says related articles, uh, the temporary tattoo will warn you if you are too. And the other one says the smart stick on to tattoo that can monitor your alcohol blood level. So there's uh, some more articles too and these temporary tattoos are going to be available free on the open market. All this is just, uh, since it's done by MIT, they're going to release it to the public. You can use like a, a vinyl cutting machine, make these uh, little tattoos for as cheap as maybe two fifty dollars a piece. Uh, there's a video to watch from Vimeo in the middle part there of a, of a ta temporary tattoo. But uh, all this gold leaf is hypoallergenic. It's food grade, so it would be the same thing they'd use to decorate gold leaf like on a cake that you would eat. So uh, hopefully no danger unless somebody's just overly sensitive to everything. But uh, yeah, this is something uh, the, one of the guys that develops, this is something we purposely wanted to make accessible to anyone, explains Miss Cow. You just 
You could just use any graphic design software on your computer to design the circuit. So you design it, cut it out with an X-Acto knife or whatever, if you have a machine that even does the cutting too, and you have your own thing. They're talking about, at the end, the, the article ends with saying, oh, people might just walk into a tattoo parlor and have this done. Well, what would be the purpose if you can make them on a machine for $2.50, especially if you're somebody, or you have friends that do, uh, what are those vinyl cutting machines that I've seen before? Uh, people that do scrapbooking. If anybody knows somebody or has a friend that does scrapbooking, they'll probably have this anyway. So just take your design to them and let them cut out. It'll be interesting to see. Somebody's got to come up with a, a strange one, too, even more than this for a, a temporary gold leaf tattoo on your body. It'll be interesting to see what they come up with. So anyway, on to my friend Chris P. and his article on some changes coming up in the G Plus Hangouts. Over to you, Chris. Hi, Chuck. Thanks for having me back on the show. Uh, it's been two years since I was here and the last time I was here we were talking about Facebook and I touched briefly upon the subject of Google Hangouts, Google Plus and YouTube um, and things have certainly changed a lot in that time. There's a couple of articles that I've been looking up on, a couple of videos that I've watched uh, on what's hanging, uh, what, what's happening with the, with the Hangouts on air. Now Google it seems are keen to move away from Google Plus. Uh, whether or not that means that the social networking site as a whole will be completely removed in the near future is still anyone's guess. But certainly as far as the live video streams go, they're being distanced from Google+. Plus. Uh, they've already made changes so that you no longer need a Google+. Plus account to comment on YouTube videos that was a very very positive change in the minds of a lot of people myself included uh, but the actual live streaming that's going on to YouTube and that's going to be happening through live events there's a section on your YouTube account it's already up there you click on that it's live events and that's what how you're going to be setting up live video broadcasts now, not all the features from Hangouts on Air are going to be making it onto the new platform. One of the things that's going is the Q&A, which is a feature that allows viewers to participate in the conversation by dropping questions and comments and, and having them answered. I suspect it's going to include other features as well, like the silly cartoony drawings and, and all the rest of it. Now, why are they doing this? Google uh, Hangouts, the, they want to focus or they want to refocus them more toward businesses, corporations, um, video conferencing more than video Hangouts or video streaming. Uh, certainly not live video streaming. That's going to be done over YouTube. There are two other apps that are coming out that are being released by Google. One's already out. That's called Duo. It's a mobile only video chat app. So it's going to be a mobile to mobile or a mobile to mobile video chat. And there's another one coming out which is called Hello. And this is going to be Google's uh, texting app uh, specific for, for texting and, and God knows what other features that's going to have in the app. To be honest, I haven't looked into that too much. It doesn't interest me at all. I barely even use WhatsApp. And um, yeah. I'd rather just text someone who use Facebook Messenger. Last time I was here, I did say I detest and despise Facebook. I still do, but I've kind of had to give up on that <laughs> and join the uh, join up with everyone else because it's, unfortunately it's the only way to keep in touch with some people sometimes. So, but anyway, back to Hangouts. Um, so, Allo and Duo are not replacing Hangouts. Now, that's an important. Thing to, to to take note of. Hangouts will still exist as a as a as an app as a platform, but it's being redesigned and refocused. You're having other apps now are coming into the fray, and they're going to be focused on specific things, and that's what Google are trying to do. They're moving away from their original idea of of let's have a one-stop shop for everything, which back then a lot of people wanted that. Uh, I used to work for a, a company called uh, 888.com, one of the online gaming companies, many, many years ago. And this was about the time that MySpace was fading out and Facebook was coming in. 
and one stop shops were very very popular back then they were the rave it's what everybody wanted and I think Google took their mark from that they've since realized it's not such a great idea the whole thing of a one-stop shop it just doesn't work you can't have a single app that does everything because when you have that then what you have is an app that's not particularly great at anything so instead they want to have multiple apps all under the Google umbrella now Google Plus I don't think is going anywhere for the immediate future but they've realized that forcing people to, to have a, a Google Plus account so they can use the other features is pushing them away, it's pushing them towards, um, particularly on, on mobile devices. I mean, I've always been a, a Google man. I've had Google accounts since, since I had my S2, uh, and I liked the, the functionality that, that Google gave you. But as soon as they started forcing your hand and you had to have Google Plus and you had to do it this way, you had to do it that way, and they started losing popularity pretty fast. So I've gone onto a Windows phone now. A lot of other people have done the same. A lot of other people have gone towards iPhones. And all three of these companies um, are, are they have they have a very same sort of setup now. Google have their own little if you have Google devices, you can link them easily. Microsoft have, an, have the same deal. iPhone, uh, i, whatever, i, Mac, they have the same deal. Um, why do I mention the phone companies particularly? Well, because phones and mobile devices are the way forward at the moment, it seems. Uh, there's more people using mobile devices than there are desktop computers and laptops these days so that's why they're coming out with the mobile apps the desktop apps uh, including hangouts that's remain but as, again the hangouts are going to be redesigned and, and, and refocused for company video conferencing and things like that not for a live chat so there's a, a section here on this article it's a, root, a return to the root of Hangouts, article says, in some ways it's a return to the roots of Hangouts, where it was more of a desktop legacy. It used pretty heavily, it, it's used pretty heavily in enterprises and small businesses and large group collaborations. Hangout will remain for those purposes. And where it's going next is into Google's Office competitor. So they're going to be integrating it more with the Google App Suite, Google Documents, uh, Google Calendars, things like that. So that's going to be the focus of, of Hangouts from here on in. For the social networking side, they want to push that back into YouTube. If you want to use video media as, as a means of social networking, then use our video platform, YouTube. And I think that's a good idea. Um, I think it's about time. I think Google lost their direction somewhat. And they stop listening to people. I'm on, uh, I'm on their, their forums quite a bit. I'm always posting uh, complaints, and, and uh, I do the particularly through YouTube. Uh, I'm always testing out beta and, and new new features and, and things like that. And when I give my feedback, no one seems to really care or want to listen. So uh, it seems that they've had enough negative feedback that they've realised it's time that they did something. So that can only be good. All right, so that's all from me on this. Uh, let's see what happens. Chuck, back to you. Thanks, Chris, for helping me out. And as usual, send in any ideas, articles you have, or anything like that. I really appreciate the material, and it makes it much easier when I know what you guys like me to uh, talk about on the TDD report. And remember, if I don't use your stuff right away, Everything that's sent in, I do put back and archive it because a lot of times I'll have a show to where I just don't have any ideas coming up and it's getting a few days away from the show and I need the ideas so I have them archived to, to pull out. So if you send something, you don't see it right away. That doesn't mean I'm ignoring it or I've forgotten that you've sent it. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.